welcome to this week's Whiteout. Aaron White with you. This week I'll take you back to the Corporate Charity Challenge race night at Cambridge Raceway last Thursday. Then I'll preview this Friday's tie night at Alexandra Park where I'll be joined by guest selector, Auckland Trotting Club Syndication Manager Andrew Jamison to talk about the 2019 Auckland Trotting Club Syndicate and have a look at Andrew's thoughts around mine for this Friday's uh, events. I'll take you through this week's text around. I'll have a chat with my driver to follow for Friday night and Group 1 winning Pukekaui horseman Andre Potama. Enjoy. We start by looking back to last Thursday's Corporate Charity Challenge race night here on the Whiteout Podcast. It was a nine race uh, program there at uh, Cambridge and the feature pace was race seven, the uh, Viands of Kihi Kihi Mobile where Countland Deck drew the inside of the second behind the hot favourite Alta Leone and uh, had a beautiful run subsequently in transit. Shane Butcher getting up the Brogdon Horse Transport passing lane and downing the hot favourite in the final few strides for trainer Roger Villiger. It was with Win seven at start 59 for the seven year old entire by Better's Delight, cutting out the 2200 metres and 243.3. Home and 159.4, 57, 628.4. Feature trot was the junior drivers event race five, the Dunstan Horse Feeds, Il Parata. Everybody's black booker from the previous meeting there at Cambridge Raceway, the son of Love You, didn't let down his army of supporters on a Thursday night, picking up his seventh success at start 62. Ross Painter, the trainer, Fergus Schumacher doing the uh, driving. Nice time for the mobile 2200, 248.4, rating 23.1, home in 60.1 and 29.8. The first on the card was taken by Comic Book Hero, the Amateurs, so that's a brace of successes now for Comic Book Hero for the Derbies, and the son of Grin from ear to ear in a great vein of form and started the Corporate Charity Challenge race night in very good fashion. The Ohalpo Square Gator Jomo back into winning form in the second, the now 10-year-old son of Earl, he claimed his sixth career success for trainer driver John Robinson after getting a lovely trip in transit there in the second. Belfast got a well-deserved win in the third for Andre Potama and Q Mutrana, a Lou Driver, the mayor by a Rock and Roll Heaven, after being a runner-up in her prior two outings at Cambridge Raceway, did go one better there on Thursday night. Well, Arden Voyager disgraced himself a week previous at Cambridge when heavily supported. Uh, atoned in a nice fashion there on Thursday, the son of uh, Some Beach Somewhere, Scott feeling for Barry Purd, and he's certainly a horse to follow. Out of the night as to the runner-up, Eastern Bull. I've made Eastern Bull my black booker from a Thursday night. It was a very, very good debut performance there by the son of Raging Bull, and he will not be a maiden too much longer, Eastern Bull. Uh, the sixth was taken by High Point. That was Morris McKendry's uh, text around runner for a Thursday too and uh, duly obliged and uh, she's opened her career uh, nicely. The Better's Delight Mayor for Tuhi Karamia trainer uh, Graham Rogerson and after two solid performances to open the career, broke her maiden status there on Thursday. Done it bad, proved that uh, his winner a week previous was no fluke as he stormed around runners for Fergus Schumacher. Uh, Craig and Tony Jamison have got a nice type on their hands by Badlands Hanover as he stomped away for a comprehensive uh, win there on Thursday's Corporate Charity Challenge race night. Uh, my boy Boo, of course, uh, recently converted uh, Square Gator, the your son of got to go collect. He'd been performing well uh, to workouts. He was still getting his head around race nights, but he paid the believers on Thursday with a beautiful James Stormont to drive uh, for trainer Andrew Sharp. And he is uh, certainly another horse to follow from uh, Thursday uh, with that uh, confidence under his belt, uh, my boy Boo. As I mentioned, uh, we will make the Black Booker from uh, Thursday's Corporate Charity Challenge race night, uh, the uh, Eastern Bull. Uh, the next meeting at uh, Cambridge Raceway, early October, October Fest. Further information there, cambridgeraceway.co.nz. 
On the Whiteout podcast, we now turn our attention to a Friday night's meeting at Alexandra Park. It is Thai night, the very popular event with the Auckland Trotting Club, and it does reach new heights this year with Thai Airways coming on board and uh, giving away an amazing prize there too. A 1 in 500 chance to win tickets to Thailand from Thai Airways uh, on the night on Friday night. A 10 race program, uh, the first gets underway at 14 minutes to 6. The doubles will start on races 1, 3, 5, uh, 7 and 9. Three uh, TAB trebles in operation starting on races 1, 4 and 8. Early quaddy starts race 2, the late quaddy race 7. Place 6 will start on race number 5. Looking at the uh, selections uh, for Thai night, I'm joined by Andrew Jamison, the Auckland Trotting Club uh, syndication manager. Let's run through the selections for Friday on this week's edition of Whiteout. <laughs> Well, we welcome into the Whiteout podcast Andrew Jamison, the Auckland Trotting Club syndication manager. And Andrew, uh, warm welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Happy to be here. All right. Uh, the reason uh, for you being my guest selector uh, this week is we're going to talk the Auckland Trotting Club uh, syndicate. Of course, the 2019 the syndicate is open for registration now. The three horses have been purchased. Tell us a wee bit about the three horses uh, that are uh, in the 2019 syndicate. Um, we've got an Alta Cristiano, a half brother to um, Alta Orlando, you know, that was going really well a few months ago for Robert Dunn, and he um, actually went pretty good last week, a couple of weeks ago. Um, mm-hmm. And Alta Cristiano, a half brother to him, we've got a uh, Better's Delight, um, one with uh, Brent Mangos and a, an American Ideal cult with uh, Shane Robertson and Logan Hollis. Um, we've uh, had them out at the um, two of them appeared at the yearling parade the other day, you know, two or three weeks ago, and um, they look pretty smart there. Um, the uh, ha- the uh, American Ideal um, won the overall section, the overall um, prize for the best presented yearling, and um, in the same section we came second with um, Brent Mangosses. Also, you know, so we uh, we did very well there, and they both looked apart. The, um, the other one, the other who didn't turn up that day. He just had a virus at the time, so they felt he wasn't quite right to, to go there. But they're looking pretty good, and um, the trainers are feeling really positive about them. And um, they'll probably be, they're, they're out at the moment, but I, I think Brent uh, Mangus is um, better to like Bet West, he's called. He's due back in work at the end of this month. So we're looking forward to some action soon. Three horses with three lovely pedigrees. We know how successful the Auckland Trotting Club syndicates have been in the past. 83% winners to starters, of course, uh, over $8.9 million in uh, uh, stakes bonuses and sales to date. Ten horses have won over 100000 Change over earned $2.4 million. A great way uh, to take in this wonderful sport of harness racing, not only to race horses, but enjoy the company of others. Yeah, yeah, um I've been running this for a couple of years now, Aaron, and and the biggest thing I've noticed is the enjoyment the people get out of it. And um, you, some people actually don't buy a whole share; they get a couple of mates or two or three mates, and they share a share. And mm-hmm. um, so, and, and um, they're getting as much enjoyment as people that own a whole share. So you, yeah, yeah. you know um, that, that that's an option out there for people. But like I say, the um, the big thing is getting to the races, watching your horse go round. And you don't have to own a lot of your horse to get a hell of a lot of a hell of a buzz from it, and that's, yeah. that's what I'm seeing. So it's been a real eye opener for me. Okay, and what are the options for people to get into the syndicate for 2019? Well, um, if they get in touch with me, if they um, 0212538765, I can send them information um, about the horses and about the financial, you know, um, commitments that need to be made for it. Um, just reminding people, you know, that they actually own um, a fraction. Well, that, that's probably not not a good way to read it, but they they own a part of the horse. They not we're not leasing them. So um, if the horses go on and um, get sold later for for good money, um, they get their share back then as well, mm-hmm. as, well as, as well as costs. I mean, they still talk now about the people that were in the changeover syndicate who who, who was sold for a for a pretty big sum um, to start. And um, Tintin in America is another one. So, you know, we've had a couple of horses 
that have actually done super well and been good sires too. So, um, yeah, they own the horse, Aaron, because some syndicates actually lease them and you don't own them. And yeah. It's, it's, it's important people understand the difference when they come into a syndicate like ours that you're actually purchasing them, and we purchase them from the sales at the start of the year. You can uh, buy a small uh, share, but you still get 100% of the fun. Yeah, that's dead right, yeah. All right, so uh, 021-2538765 to uh, uh, register your interest in uh, becoming uh, part of the 2019 Auckland Trotting Club uh, Syndicate. Do it now because uh, well worth getting involved. As I mentioned, uh, three nice horses there with very good pedigrees behind them, and we know the pedigree of the Auckland Trotting Club Syndicates over there, 17 syndicates that have all proved very, very successful. Right, Andrew, it's tie night on Friday night at Alexandra Park, so whilst I've got you, we might as well grab a selection on each race on the program. We'll start in the first over the uh, 2,200 metres for the Trotters. Who do you like in race one? Well, I like Dickie's the player at, um, at the workouts on Saturday. Um, they always have theirs ready to go, and they're a great stable for, for Trotters. So... Well, I would presume as long as it drops the whole way, it's got to be a good chance. All right, back on a new campaign, eight the player. I thought Great Fantasy was a chance to finally get that to maiden success on Friday. To beat the eight the player, Macarelli the six and seven is free as air. To open the early quaddy, Andrew, race number two over the 2,200 metres, a very, very nice maiden here. What have you seen going around at the workouts that we could put a few dollars on in the second? I've actually been impressed a little bit with Jets and Hunter. Um, I have a bit of a concern though drawing nine on the second row, you know, um, one on the second row. Um, it just depends probably whether he gets shuffled back or how far he gets shuffled back. He's more a roughie than a than a favourite. That would be my roughie in that race, Aaron. He's a nice type. I actually put him on top, Andrew Jetson Hunter, the son of changeover. If things go his way. He could certainly beat this field. Uh, where there's a will, the five was good when runner-up and behind the impressive Dream Major last time. Picky Sun debuted with a good placing. And 13, Mark Brad, he's drawn bad. He had this draw in his uh, resumption. Did a good enough job there to be considered for all combination bets. Nine to beat five, 12 and 13. The third to open a double. The Trotters here, Andrew, 2,700 metres. Great to have Speeding Spur back on track. Yeah, yeah, and he's probably got to be pretty tough. But I went for Mr Good and Evil, who... We beat him at the workouts, I think, on Saturday, and um, perhaps uh, he might beat him again. Yeah, he gets a 35-metre advantage over Speeding Spur there on a Friday night. Of course, Speeding Spur off a 50-metre back mark. It's going to be very, very tough from uh, that back mark, too, for a Speeding Spur. If they do trot 330 off the front, he's got to go 325 to uh, beat them out. So uh, it'll be have, uh, great to have him on track. I did go the way of Monaro Mir, a nice winner at Alexandra Park back in late August, Salish Abernathy for Nikki Chilcott. I thought she could certainly go back-to-back back over Speeding Spur, the champ, seven times Group 1 winner. Heard the whisper, last two runs have been good, and Katie Hall in the mix there for me, 8-10 to beat four. And seven, the fourth to open the middle treble here again. Maiden's a nice maiden. Andrew, what have you seen around uh, the place that we could uh, tip our uh, listeners into in the fourth? Uh, probably Robert Dunn's maiden, having its first start. Chevron Supremes looked pretty nice at the trials and one again on run at the trials on Saturday, so I'd give it a chance of winning first up. Yeah, it gets a nice draw. Morris McKendry doing the driving. I found it on top two to beat five authentic. A six, a divine justice, and I put uh, Sylvia in the mix there as well. Number two, another debutante in the race. Three to beat five, six, and two. Double in place, six starts on race number uh, five. The square gate is here, Andrew. 2,700 metres. Who do you like in the fifth? Oh, that's one race I didn't have a look at, Aaron, so I'll, let, I'll listen to your fix and go by what you said. I went the way of uh, Barroom Brawl. I thought he was a definite chance if he did everything right for Joshua Dickey. Angus Berg has been racing well. Uh, Brent Mangos. Uh, Jansen, the 12's in the mix, and that one brings consistent form to the races. As to 13, uh, Gina's girl, 11 to beat 10, 12, 13. I thought it was an open race and gave Red Castleton a chance at big odds. I made him my long shot on the card on well Friday the trials, night. He went well at the trials the other day, didn't he, Red Castleton, I think? Yeah, now with Michelle Wallace and Bernie Hack in yeah. here too with the uh, retirement of uh, Richard Brosnan and uh, can operate well in a fresh state, Red Castle. And so if you're looking for some odds, maybe the eight in race number five. Andrew, the sixth on the uh, card here and uh, some nice horses resuming. We've got some good fit horses in the race as well. What did you find in the sixth? 
Probably a little bit rough, but I went for Cogent Banner. Like you're saying, uh, um, a lot of these are resuming, and it's just a case of how fit they are or what times they run and things like that. But I gave Trojan Banner a chance of bringing the money. Has He's been going well at the workouts, hasn't he? Yes, he has, yeah. Mm, all right, I went to his stable mate, uh, Rico Lover. I thought he could be a, a big threat, uh, fresh up the betters delight, cold Andre Potama. Over Baquero, she's been racing well, the shadow play near. Uh, Trojan Banner, yep, well in the mix, and Spirit of Anzac comes up with a right draw too uh, to be a threat in race number six, four, six, three, and a one. Like Quaddy starts race seven here, uh, uh, Andrew, and uh, who did you find in the seventh for us? Ray Green stable again. I went for Make Way. I thought he was a bit of an underrated horse last year, and he went some good races against some good horses. So um, he's been going all right at the workout, so I give him a chance of winning first up. Yeah, last seen on Jules Day, uh, Make Way. I did make him my bet of the night, number five in race seven to beat two English Rose with a nice draw. She's been racing well. To Sir with Love debuted with a very nice win back on the 21st of August. Ideal Maggie debuted with a nice win a fortnight ago at Cambridge after producing some very good runs at the trials. Todd Mitchell, five to beat two, ten and one. The eighth to open the final treble and a great to have some of these paces back on track at Alexandra Park. Andrew, who do you like in our feature pace? Probably starting only off 20, Star Gallery has probably got to be a good chance. Not a big field. I like um, Max Shard to run in the money, um, but I don't know if he can... Um, if he's capable of only getting 20 metres off uh, Star Gallery or the way this race is been, you know, set up. Um, yeah, it was a I really good... Yeah. It was a really no, good return. Say, I th- yeah, I think it's a, a maximum of 25 metres, 20 or 25 metre handicap, so... So Gallery would probably a lot further behind him in a, in a proper handicap race, I think. Yeah, dead right. Uh, Mark Shard was a very, very nice return uh, yeah, to racing back on the 24th, uh, 24th of August. Does have his first standing start on uh, Friday night, but he seems a sensible type. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's the thing, you know, if he does bobble away, Star Gallery might be not too far behind him when they settle, so I don't know if he can uh, hold him out. <laughs> Yeah, he's a pretty would, smart horse. Stephen Reed's he, horse is a pretty smart horse, I think. He certainly is. Uh, he, I went with the superstar star, Galleria, to return with a win. A Mark Shard off the front with a 20-metre advantage. He's going to land nice and handy. Uh, no doctor needed. Very good winning the Tiamudu Cup. And Northview Hustler, uh, of course, he doesn't mind being in for a, a dogfight, Andre Potama. He's a definite threat to the major players. Six to beat one, five and three. The second to last on the... Uh, card, uh, Andrew, the junior drivers, who did you find in the uh, ninth on the program? I thought Benson Boys um, was probably, he probably lost his way coming around the final bend at Cambridge the other night. And um, he, when he flattened out, he certainly came quite fast. And probably another 20 or 30 metres, he probably won the race. So um, he, he's won this way around. So I'd give him a good chance of winning the junior drivers race. I think he's probably quite a promising horse of Barry Purden's. Yeah, an art major gelding, one on debut at Alexandra Park prior to that third at Cambridge. I did find him on top as well, the seven to beat the nine. I'm all about the base, has been working up nicely after a freshen up. Uh, the uh, nine to Ramako uh, reactors in the mix. Uh, of course, uh, Barry run, uh, one didn't help him in his first run at Alexandra Park. Give him another chance. And Susie PJ, the speed's on, could get over the top of them at a big price, seven, five, nine, and eight. And in the uh, lucky last, Andrew, and uh, I thought it was a wide open field, so uh, could you get us out in the last with? Well, I've got a beauty. Got a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Reece Benson trains it. Um, he's been he's been a bit of, he's gone some honest races and been unlucky two or three times and um, this might be his kind of race um, just depends where he settles but I'll give him a chance it's, he's he's certainly not out of this one yeah, he has been racing well for Penny and Reese hasn't he uh, got a beauty yeah. I put him on top in the last the six to beat the three uh, five the persuader have found a spot for him and also two cracker red uh, six three five and two uh, Andrew what can I mark down as your best bet of the night. Oh, best bet of the night. Probably Chevron Supreme. Chevron Supreme on debut. In race number four, my best bets were make way in race seven and Star Galleria in the eighth. Uh, long shot is a Red Castleton. Andrew, thank you very much for your time on uh, this week's uh, White Out to podcast. And uh, good luck with those uh, three quality, uh, quality youngsters coming through with the Auckland Trotting Club 2019 Syndicate. Again, just let uh, our listeners know how they can get a hold of you. 
021-253-8765. Yes, give Andrew a ring and get involved in harness racing ownership. No better time to be racing horses in the Auckland area with the stake money about to take a big boost over the coming months there as well. Andrew, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity to speak, Gary. Yes, we thank uh, Andrew Jamison joining me on uh, Whiteout this week. And uh, yes, do get involved. Do give Andrew a call and uh, get involved with the Auckland Trotting Club Syndicate. We know the success and uh, you get to enjoy uh, harness racing with like-minded people. And it's always a great night when the horses do come out and uh, take their part in the races. Great atmosphere with all the uh, syndicate members uh, generally getting their way on track. So do give uh, Andrew a call and get involved in harness racing ownership through the very successful Auckland Trotting Club syndicates. Now my driver to follow this week is a Group 1 winning uh, Pukekohe horseman Andre Potsama. Let's go and see what Andre's got to say about his drives for this week's Whiteout. <laughs> Joining me now on the uh, Whiteout podcast is my driver to follow for this Friday night at Alexandra Park, Thai night, Pukekohe Horseman and Group 1 winning driver, Andre Potama. How's it going, Andre? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you, yourself? Yeah, not bad. Hey, the season started off well for you. I see you got another winner there at Cambridge last week on Belfast. A well-deserved uh, success for her. Yeah, no, it was well-deserved success. You know, she... Um... She's always been a lovely horse to drive, and she loves being in front. You know, she actually surprised me a wee bit, um, running that quick quarter down the back and getting a cheap one. And you know, that was her third win. And I was looking at there the other night that I that I've driven all three of those winners. So um, it might be one I might be able to kick Zachary Butcher off. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, nice win it was too last uh, Thursday night. Right, let's look at your drives uh, this week. Jetson Hunter in race number two. Now, he's a nice maiden. Things didn't go his way on debut, but his trial form suggests he's got a bit of a motor. Yeah, no, he was lovely, lovely, lovely horse. Um, You know, his trial was excellent the other day, just teaching him to follow, and he zipped up the lane real good. So, um, look, his, his first start at Auckland, you probably just put the pencil through that one, um, he, he drew eight and he sort of had no luck getting around him and he was a little bit green and that, but he's definitely a horse with ability. Um, if he gets a, if he gets off the green on a fence on Friday night, I think he'd be a, be a good chance. Does he show a nice turn of foot? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely got a nice turn of foot there. When you ask him to go, he'll go, but he, when he thinks he's had enough, he, he just tries one of those horses that just switch off. But um, when he qualified as a two-year-old and got tipped out, I think that that's probably going to be the making of them. Mm, all right, moving into uh, race number six, and uh, Rico Lover here back on a new campaign. What's he been doing at the uh, workouts? Yeah, he's had uh, two trials, and he's actually come back really nice. You know, um, I'm surprised Ray Green's still got a little bit of hair on his head. He's um, He's been a bit frustrating. He's um, he's definitely a, he's a good horse. Um, he's, he's come up good, so... He's, He's got a right race for him to start off his campaign this season. He's a nice type, and uh, whatever he does on uh, Friday night, he's just going to improve, isn't he? Yeah, 100%. He'll just get better and better with um, each run. Moving into the feature pace on the card, and the Northview Hustler here back on a new campaign, of course, does own the New Zealand 2200-metre standing star record with race rival star Galleria. He doesn't mind a dog fight, and what do you expect on Friday night from the son of Better's Delight? Yeah, we're expecting a, a good run from him. He's had two trials and they've been excellent. Um, he's just a lovely horse, you know. He's one of my favourite ones in the barn. He just does whatever he has to do and every time he's out there, he puts 110% into it. So, um, look, if he, if he begins well and, he, and he's lucky enough to find the front early, um, he'll be a tough one to bowl. But we know how good Star Gallery has been going. His trials have been good too. So, um, look, I'm not worried about... My, my fella at all. I know he, that he'll be ready to go on Friday, so um, you definitely got to put him in there. And he's a definite threat to the major players in the feature pace race eight on the card. And to the lucky last, the persuader, well, uh, he got impeded last time. He blew the score up the time before. Desperately unlucky three starts ago. Can you make us a case for the persuader and persuade us into him in the last on Friday? I hope so. I've just had me bad hands on lately that I haven't been able to get him to score up. But um, 
Look, I think if he scores up, he's um, he's a definitely winner's chance. I think you know he he deserves to win, but he's just had a lot of bad luck lately going his way. So um, hopefully we can turn that around on Friday. Yeah, it's a moderate field there in the last, and if things does go uh, his way and he does score up nicely, he's a major player there. I thought. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, it's an even even field, and Tim said he's been good during the week, so. Um, but we'll just go by that, and if he can get off that gate, he's uh, definitely one of the chance. And what can I mark down as your best for our podcast listeners? Well, I'd love to say Rico Lover, but I don't think you'll get rich off that one, so we'll probably put our gold coin on the persuader in the last. Oh, the persuader in the last. Uh, before I let you go, Andre, of course, you've got a few more horses around you now on the training side of things. How are you enjoying that? Yeah, it's good, actually. It's, it's different. It's... Um, Makes a busy life, you know. I've had the I've had the wife down there starting to do a few boxes before she goes to the gym, so um, just to make it a bit easier on me. So uh, it's um it's been good, you know. It's just another role that I, that I'm going to take, and it's pretty similar to the greyhounds and that. So I'm actually enjoying it, and just being able to see my own colours out there is a great feeling. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Now, you've got a nice team around you and you've uh, had a win with Big for Chevron. Have you got one that we need to follow over the uh, coming months? Um, probably Kai time. He's, he went super last time at Auckland. He probably wasn't ready for that run and he ran second and just got done. So um, I've just given him a little bit of time off, just six weeks. But when he comes back, I think he'll be, he'll be a good chance to have a good season ahead of him. So... Hopefully we can get one off and get a few more in the in the team. All right, Kai, time one to mark down, and there's always room for a people to send a horse to Andre Potama. Yeah, I've got to keep the misses in form. <laughs> great, great stuff. Hey, Andre, thank you very much for your time on the podcast, and uh, good luck with those drives on a Friday night in the season ahead. And I know you'll be waiting for uh, Joe's dream, of course, to make a return back to the racetrack. Uh, what can you tell us quickly about her race, uh, Tiamudu Cup night? Uh, she she probably packed a little bit of a wobbly. You know, she um if she can't if she doesn't step straight away, she just has one of those little female fit so uh, she wasn't very happy so we'll probably just put the pencil through that one and wait for the next time. Yeah, and Queen of Hearts time coming around in December of course looking to defend her title. Yeah, I'd say she's a definite uh, threat going into uh, that Queen of Hearts. I know we're a long way away but uh, uh, the way the Mayor's ranks are looking at this stage she'd be a, a big chance to repeat. Yeah, no, that'd be an exciting time for that to come back up and if we were lucky enough to repeat that it would be a great thrill. Hey, thanks, Andre, and uh, good luck on Friday night. Beautiful. Thanks very much. Yes, a big thank you to Andre Potama for his thoughts around uh, his runners on Friday night. Before I leave you, we've got to go through our text around for this week. We start with president of the Auckland Trotting Club, Bruce Carter. He says his horse, English Rose, in race number seven, a nice each-way chance, has been racing well. Morris McHenry, successful last week in our text around. Uh, can he complete his uh, 100% strike rate? I think he can with uh, Chevron Supreme in race number four. Scott Phelan says the classy mare, Baquero, race number six, Todd Mitchell. Uh, Jansen in race number five expected to give another very good account of himself. Jack McKinnon, race nine, the Lone Ranger. Jay Abernathy says the Hulk after uh, those very good wins at Cambridge. He can turn that into Auckland winning form in race number three. Todd McFarlane, race two, with Peaky Sun after a nice day boo by him. Scott Iamunga says with a nice draw in race number six, Spirit of Anzac, a definite threat in the sixth on the uh, Thai night program. Andre Potama, as we heard there, he does like Rico Lover, but also have a, a couple of gold coins there on the Persuader in the lucky last. Uh, trainer Michelle Wallace says uh, the best of her team this week could be in race number five, that being Monarchy Invasion. So Monarchy Invasion there in race number five. Well, folks, I trust you've enjoyed this week's edition of Whiteouts. Happy punting for this Friday night, Thai night at Alexandra Park. I'll catch you back next week. Until then, it's Aaron White. Outs.